Paul from the Leiden University. He is also a visiting professor from the Leiden University at Chairman Taina, Wahan Taina, Salermo Italia, and the Catholic University of Central Africa in Cameroon. Professor Otto Speichter will speak about the case in Holland, climate change, and the uh, state's role. Muchas gracias por su introducción. Voy a extender mi gratitud y mi agradecimiento a Rafael. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we met in Oslo in, the, in June, I think. And uh, then we spoke briefly about the agenda case, which I'm about to introduce to you. And uh, it seemed to me that uh, Sanjo knew much more about the case than I did. So I could happily change places with him, but uh, I won't. Huh? But he's very knowledgeable of the case. So I'm going to uh, focus my uh, talk on this one particular case, uh, the Urgenda case. Very peculiar case, very unusual in the world, but also in the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands, we don't have a, a particular jurisdiction for environmental law cases. Uh, so the Urgenda Association had to use the ordinary courts uh, to bring this uh, claim against the state. So this is the outline of my presentation. First, I'm going to present the Urgenda Association to you. Uh, so what kind of association is it? Uh, what is its mission? And how does it set out to achieve its mission? And also, what kind of legal entity is it that might be interesting for you uh, lawyers? And then I'm going to provide you with a brief summary of the case. First, uh, the ruling. I'm already going to give away the uh, outcome at the beginning. Uh, and then I will introduce you briefly to the facts underlying the case and then the law. The law, I have to warn you, is very complicated with a lot of layers in it. So if you get lost, don't worry. This paper of this uh, presentation is actually based on a paper uh, that I'm happy to share with anyone who has an interest in it. So please come to me and I will email you the paper. I'm afraid the paper will be in English, so we have to ask the translators kindly to also translate the entire paper. Um, so I'm going to introduce you the case and then uh, if I have time left, I will focus on uh, balance of power issues because the most contentious, the most controversial element of the case is indeed this balance of power issue. Uh, whether the association actually urged the court to take the place of the executive branches, uh, of the uh, political branch, sorry, the executive and the legislative branch, and make policy. Uh, so did the association use the court system to, um, uh, to make policy, to have policy made? That's the big contentious issue. So the ruling of the case, so what was the outcome of the case? Uh, the court, the Dutch uh, district court, ordered the state of the Netherlands to limit the joint volume of Dutch annual greenhouse gas emissions or have them limited so that this volume will have reduced by at least 25% at the end of 2020 compared to the level of the year 1990. It's a bit complicated. But in the end, what the court ordered the Netherlands to do is to quite drastically reduce the greenhouse gas emissions originating from the Dutch territory. It didn't uh, exactly uh, detail how this ought to be done, but uh, the, uh, the ruling is quite specific. So let me say uh, where we are now. Yes, this was a judgment of 24 June 2015. Uh, since then, the Dutch government has decided to appeal and they filed their grounds for appeal in June 2016. And today, at the end of the year, so November, December, could be tomorrow, uh, we will have an appeals judgment. Uh, and this is expected later this year. And a lot of people are a bit concerned about the appeal judgment because the district court judgment was quite revolutionary. And as you know, the higher up you go in the rankings, the more conservative these judges become. So we are very afraid. <laughs> that the appeals court, I, I, didn't hope, I hope I didn't offend any judges uh, present in there. But that's just life. Um, so it's very possible that this uh, very controversial but very revolutionary judgment will be quashed on, on appeal uh, so that there's nothing left. But until then, uh, let's continue our celebration of this uh, uh, extraordinary judgment. To share with you a bit the excitement that the judgment triggered in the Netherlands, I have a short video. It's three minutes, but if we get tired of it already sooner, I can stop. 
Urgenda wint in Nederland een klimaatproces. Nederland moet meer doen tegen de opwarming van de aarde. In 2020 moet de uitstoot met zeker 25% zijn teruggebracht ten opzichte van 1990. Het berusten in een geringere productie is onrechtmatig tegenover Urgenda. Van A tot Z geweldig. Ik was echt aan het wachten van oké, okay, er gaat hier nog een maar komen. En die maar kwam niet. Dus ik was, ja, het was iedereen hier, denk ik. Ik ben echt, ik probeer net te twitteren, ik had echt trillende vingers. Ik vind, ik vind het echt een historische uitspraak waar we, of ik word gewoon emotioneel van. Deze zaak en het is uiteindelijk zo groot eh, maatschappelijk belang waar het hier over gaat. Eh, dat ik er niks aan kan doen dat ik even mijn professionaliteit hier eh, verlies. Wat maken uw kinderen mee? You see, so a lot of emotions. And the last person you saw was uh, Robert Cox, uh, the lead counsel of Urgenda. And he worked on this uh, case for yeah, 10 years, hey, without exaggerating. So he published a book making the case uh, for uh, this uh, climate change litigation. And then he found this association, Urgenda, to actually uh, go to court based on his argumentation that he developed in that book. And then they won. So uh, what is Urgenda? Urgenda is an association established in 2008 under Dutch civil law, right? so it's registered in the Netherlands. And according to its own bylaws, the purpose is to stimulate and accelerate the transition processes to a more sustainable society beginning in the Netherlands. And Urgenda is entitled, according to Dutch civil law, to start legal proceedings to achieve this purpose. Eh? So um, the question then, if we look to standing, is whether uh, to start legal proceedings ordering the state to uh, do more to combat climate change, whether that is a way to achieve this purpose as defined in its bylaws. Um, so the court had to uh, pronounce on this, on whether Urgenda actually had standing to bring this case. And there were two tricky elements. First, the purpose seems to indicate a prioritization of uh, the Netherlands, but uh, combating climate change is a, league, is a global issue. Uh, but then the court had very little problems uh, solving this issue. Uh, it said the purpose of Urgenda has a global dimension, so it combines the global with the local. Eh? So you deal with global issues, but you have to start somewhere, so we start local. Also, uh, the case, uh, have the Dutch state reduce uh, clim uh, greenhouse gas emissions, seems to have uh, a lot to do with the protection of rights of, in of uh, future generations. So is that possible? Is Urgenda allowed to bring claim on behalf of future generations? And then the Dutch court said, yes, because a sustainable society, as referred to in its bylaws, refers to the concept of sustainable development. And according to the Brundtland report, sustainable development needs to be defined as a development that meets the needs of present generations without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So clearly, sustainable society has this intergenerational dimension. So standing of Urgenda, yes. So they were entitled to bring the claim. Uh, before the uh, responsibility of the Netherlands could be established, uh, Urgenda had to uh, prove quite a lot of uh, causal relations that are very controversial and contentious. So there are three of them, uh, roughly speaking. First, Urgenda had to show that it was very probable that human actions uh, read uh, emitting greenhouse gas are the main cause of global warming. I guess in 99.9% .9 of scientists agree, but uh, I don't know, George Bush always managed to find this one or two people that uh, tend to dispute this. Uh, so, uh, so Urgenda had to uh, prove that there was such causal link. 
Second, a temperature rise of more than two degrees Celsius will cause dangerous and irreversible climate change threatening the environment and mankind. That also had to be substantiated, that a slight decrease in temperature will have these catastrophic consequences. And third, what had to be substantiated is that a mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions will actually lead to a decrease or stabilization of climate change. In other words, it's not too late, eh? we can still take action. So the court, in dealing with these causal links, uh, said we are not scientists, so we are not going to establish these causal links. But fortunately, we have the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, that has done all the science for us already. And uh, in view of the courts, neither of the parties, uh, so Urgenda nor the State of the Netherlands, disputed the authority of uh, the Intergovernmental Panel. So the court argued we can easily make use of their scientific findings. Where do I have to aim? Okay. Oh, it's... Oh, okay, now it works. Uh, no, it's, it's okay. So, no, that also didn't work. So, the, the law of the case, but thanks anyway. Um, so what is the law of the case? Of course, we are all lawyers here, so we want to learn from the, the Dutch legal framework that was applicable. As I said, we don't have an environmental court, so the Urgenda had to use the existing legal framework, and they actually uh, argued that uh, not doing enough to uh, reduce uh, climate change is a tort, a wrongful act uh, under Dutch civil law. In order for a tort to be established, uh, these four things have to be uh, proven, have to be shown. Uh, so first, a tortious act has to be uh, demonstrated. Uh, and this tortious act has to be attributable to the state of the Netherlands. And uh, the act or omission must be likely to cause damage to the claimant, i.e. to Urgenda. So it must be shown that the actions or the omissions of the Dutch state actually cause uh, damage to the claimant. And then a causal link between the act and the damage must be shown and the norm breached must be shown to exist for the protection of the interests of Urgenda. So these five criterion are based on Article, 6, uh, Article uh, 162, Book 6 of the Dutch Civil Code. It's interesting for some of you uh, to note that the uh, Netherlands is not immune for tort uh, suits. Eh? So the, the Dutch state has no immunity under Dutch law. So anyone can sue the state in the Netherlands. Um, so look, let's look at these five conditions, uh, one after the other, beginning with tortious act. So has there been a tortious act? There are uh, three types of tortious acts under Dutch civil law. A tortious act can be a violation of someone else's, has to read, urgenda's rights. It can be a, an act or omission in violation of a duty imposed by law on the state of the Netherlands, a statutory obligation. Or... It can be an act or mission in violation of what, according to unwritten law, has to be regarded as proper social conduct. So a breach of the duty of care that is upon the uh, Dutch state. So I will explain to you first why uh, there was no violation of a particular right uh, or of a duty imposed by law on the state of the Netherlands. So I will first explain why that was not the case. Um, so, Urgenda actually invoked a lot of uh, provisions arguing that the Netherlands had breached them. So, first they relied on Article 21 of the Dutch Constitution, uh, which says that it shall be the concern of the authorities to keep the country habitable and to protect and improve the environment. Um, and so, the uh, Urgenda alleged that uh, the Dutch state had breached this provision. But then the court said, no, no, uh, this provision cannot be invoked directly by Urgenda because it leaves too much discretion to the executive branch uh, as to the manner in which this task must be executed. So it cannot be invoked directly. And then Urgenda invoked various international uh, provisions, uh, including the Climate Change Convention and the Kyoto Protocol, but also Article uh, 191 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, and the customary no harm rule, uh, which says that states have the responsibility to ensure that activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to the environment of other states. Uh, you don't find this in any treaty, uh, it's, a, a it's a rule of international customary law. 
So of all this international law, the court said, Urgenda cannot invoke these provisions directly against the Netherlands before the Dutch courts, because uh, these provisions all involve uh, obligations uh, towards other states. So they do not create rights of Urgenda, but they only create rights of other states vis-a-vis -vis the Netherlands. So Urgenda could not invoke these provisions directly. Then Urgenda also tried to invoke uh, human rights provisions, uh, in particular Articles 2 and 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights, to which, of course, the Netherlands is party. But uh, this also did not work because, in a view of the Dutch court, Urgenda is not a direct victim of any breaches of these provisions. So Urgenda as an association did not have to fear for its life. Sounds a bit silly, but that's actually the argument. Uh, neither did the organization have to fear for its family. Of course, uh, an association doesn't have any children, uh, so it doesn't have to fear for its uh, family or private life. It, it sounds a bit silly, but this is really how the, the court argued uh, against the direct effect of these provisions in the European Convention on Human Rights. So to conclude, uh, Urgenda was not a direct victim of any ECHR violations, and also under the European Convention on Human Rights, there's no actio popularis in the sense that an association cannot um, come up for or defend the interests of uh, uh, the international community as a whole or all uh, individual people in Europe, uh, let alone the future generations of Europe. And uh, no direct invocability of any of these other provisions I referred to. So then we are left with the third possibility of a tortious act, namely the duty of care. In, or, in order to show uh, a duty of care has been uh, breached, uh, these um, criteria has to be substantiated, has to be shown, established. So I go through them uh, one after the other. And so did the uh, Dutch government act careless uh, when not taking sufficient action to uh, reduce the greenhouse gas uh, emissions from the Netherlands? That's the question. What's that carelessness? Then we have to look first to the nature and the extent of the damage uh, that this uh, alleged carelessness will cause. Well, the damage resulting from climate change, as we all know, is potentially catastrophic. So the minimum threshold of seriousness of damage was very easily met. Then the knowledge and foreseeable of this foreseeability sorry, of this damage and the chance that this damage will occur. Is, can that be uh, shown? And here the court referred again to the uh, reports of the IPCC, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and also made extensive uh, reference to the precautionary principle, uh, which says that if there is scientific uncertainty, we have to err on the side of caution. Uh, so not to easily conclude, well, we don't know what's going to happen, so let's just continue polluting the world uh, until we know for sure that uh, this is a bad, has bad consequences. So those uh, elements also substantiated. Then the nature of the acts of the state contributing to the damage. So what kind of, what's the nature of the uh, acts of the state itself? This is an interesting question because most of the emission of the greenhouse gases is not done by the state. It's done by farmers, uh, by uh, the uh, energy sector eh, mostly. So we have uh, privatized everything in the Netherlands, so energy is provided by uh, corporations. And some of these corporations have actually quite recently established new uh, coal plants that are highly polluting. Um, so what is the responsibility of the state? Well, the responsibility of the state is a failure to effectively regulate uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. So it is because of uh, bad regulation that these private companies could build these new coal plants. Eh? That's the argument. And then the onerousness of taking precautionary measures. Um, of this, the court said, the sacrifices that the state must undertake eh, to reduce these uh, emissions uh, are not unreasonable or impossible. They are burdensome, yes, but they are not unreasonable or impossible. Eh? So we could uh, think of a... Um, a new energy plan that focuses much more on subsidizing uh, green energy, like uh, windmills and uh, uh, solar energy and so on. And then the discretion of the state to execute its public duties. The court should leave as much discretionary powers to the executive and legislative branch, 
and only establish an absolute lower, lowest limit of gas emission reduction. Uh, in doing so, uh, the court argued, we are not trespassing on the territory of the political branches of government, because they still have quite a lot of discretion on how they want to implement uh, the judgment. So that is a tortious act. So yes, tortious act has been established. There was a breach of the duty of care uh, by the Dutch uh, state. And then we have to go through these other five uh, elements that I referred to earlier, but this we can do quite quickly. So can this tortious act, uh, this breach of the duty of care, can it be attributable, uh, attributed sorry, to the state of the Netherlands? Yes, as I said earlier, a failure to regulate greenhouse gas emissions by farmers, energy sector, and so on, can be attributable to the Netherlands. Um, is it likely to cause damage to the claimant? Yes. Uh, according to the uh, bylaws of uh, Urgenda, Urgenda uh, comes up for a general interest, uh, that is uh, the process towards a sustainable society. And if, uh, the Dutch court, uh, in the, if the Dutch state acts careless in not taking enough action, that effectively hinders the process towards sustainable society. And thus it hurts the interest that uh, uh, the association of Urgenda was established to protect. Uh, the norm breached must exist for the protection of the interest of the claimant. Uh, this is what we call the condition of relativity. That's also met huh, because the general duty of care is also there to protect the interest of Urgenda. So to conclude, we have uh, the ruling that I referred to earlier because all the elements have been uh, met. On causation is, is sort of interesting. I want to share with you this one argument that will play a big role on appeal. Because on appeal, the, the Netherlands argued that, uh, well, the Netherlands, we are only a small country, and uh, if we drastically reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions from the Netherlands, that's only one drop uh, in the ocean that will not fall in the ocean. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Trump will probably withdraw from the uh, Paris Agreement and say we can pollute uh, as much as we want. And, and then if the Netherlands takes this initiative, it won't make any difference. Uh, so that's going to be a big argument on appeal. Another related argument is the waterbed argument. And so you have to understand that the European Union as a whole has to meet these uh, climate change, so uh, greenhouse gas uh, reduction uh, 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 limits. And so the EU as a whole. So if the Netherlands drastically reduces its uh, greenhouse gas emissions, another state, say Belgium, can emit a lot more. Uh, that's the waterbed. So if we do our very, very best, then another state is entitled to go way above uh, the, the original limits it set for itself. That's just the way how it, uh, EU law works. We call that the waterbed effect. So again, that will play a big role in the uh, appeal. So is this uh, an example of uh, public interest litigation? Uh, so can we qualify the uh, legal proceedings of agenda as such? Well, there are five elements that need to be fulfilled uh, in order to speak of public interest litigation. So, was the proceeding started by an association established under Dutch law? Yes. Uh, does the association pursue a general interest instead of its own particular interest? Yes. Eh? The uh, purpose is to accelerate the transition towards a more sustainable society. Uh, does Urgenda use the law as its language or tool to achieve its purpose? Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, does it use it domestic courts as its forum? Well, obviously, yeah, because it started the proceedings uh, at the domestic court. And is its ultimate aim to bring about policy change? Yes. It's very important, and Robert Cox emphasizes this every time he speaks anywhere. Urgenda does not want compensation, does not want money. It wants policy change. So even if the court rules that the carelessness of the Netherlands is harmful to Urgenda, we don't want compensation. That Robert Cox is very clear on this. And then on the balance of powers. So when the association asks of the Dutch courts to order the executive and the legislative branch had to further reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Isn't the association then, in a way, asking the court to make policy or to change policy? And is that really the proper functioning of a, a court? Well, 
the court had an answer to this question already. Had they said, well, first of all, there's no full separation of state powers in the Netherlands. There's rather a balance of powers. So the, the court can make a little bit of policy as long as it doesn't trespass too much on the territory of the executive and the legislative branch. And also, a court is simply obligated to provide legal protection and settle legal disputes when called for. So when uh, the Association of Regenda brought their claim before the Dutch courts, well, the court could not have refused to exercise the functions that the court is set up to do, i.e. to assess whether a wrongful act has been committed. I mean, that's what courts do. And what uh, the court also emphasized, uh, please, uh, half a minute. Uh, uh, my time is up, but I, I'm begging the chair for half a minute. Okay. Um, so the court emphasized that uh, we assess whether the state has exercised sufficient care and we concluded that it had not. So we did not tell them, we did not tell the state how exactly to fulfill its duty of care. And therefore, we did not trespass on uh, political branch territory. So very briefly, the, the main arguments in this uh, controversy and so does public interest litigation like the Urgenda proceedings disturb the balance of powers? If you argue yes, uh, these are the most commonly heard arguments. Decisions involving public interest litigation are better made through the political process by democratically legit legitimized representatives with input from all interested parties and consideration of all relevant interests. Uh, the argument is often made that the Urgenda case is now between uh, a quite radical environmental association and the state, but the corporations are not involved, uh, the farmers are not involved, uh, the, the, the uh, energy sector is not involved. Uh, then the political process is better suited to resolve complex scientific issues. That's not something the court is uh, competent to do. Uh, here you could... Uh, use as counter argument that the court referred to these IPCC uh, reports to substantiate the facts. Another uh, argument, an association like Urgenda can frustrate the process by urging the court to impose a particular policy decision on the state. But there's also a praise of what the uh, courts have done in this case. Uh, as many people have argued that an association like Urgenda can persuade the court to push, push through a political stalemate. And that is a very interesting argument because uh, the ruling was that uh, a, a greenhouse gas reduction of at least 25% must be uh, established. And in the latest uh, uh, policy document, only released a few months ago, the, core, uh, the, the Dutch government goes as far as, far as uh, 23% reduction. So we are almost there. We're only 2% off. And so it's very clear that this judgment has influenced uh, the government's policy and has actually uh, managed to uh, push through a political stalemate. Uh, but the counter argument is the cure is worse than the disease because uh, 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 judgments like this will undermine the moral authority of the court and so the court will no longer be perceived as an impartial institution but rather as a group of uh, activists siding with the association of Urgenda. So I leave it up to you uh, uh, what you think of uh, the court's revolutionary judgment uh, and of uh, the association's use of the, uh, the court in the Netherlands. Thank you very much for your attention.